Let's now take a look at the idea of comparing two population parameters. So far, we've been collecting data and doing analysis based on a univariate approach, one variable, one data set. In the real world, quite often, we need to compare two different groups or more, three, four, five different groups. So this next series actually gets going with the idea of different techniques we can use to compare two different groups. The learning objectives, we want to understand the difference between independent and dependent samples is very key for determining the type of analysis you're going to do, particularly if you're dealing with the mean, the median, or the variances. Uh, we want to be able to construct and interpret a test of hypothesis comparing two population parameters, um, identify appropriate parameters to compare based on the data, and we've been doing that all along. If you think about it, uh, we take a look at the data. We want to talk about the mean as an example. We collect some data. We look at the data and say, is it appropriate to talk about the mean, or do we need to switch gears and go to the median? It's, it's the same idea here. And the last, we want to discuss a little bit and comprehend the difference between practical and statistical significance, because there's definitely a difference. Okay. Before we can look at techniques used for the comparison of two samples, we must first discuss the meaning of independent and dependent samples. Um, in general, if the same source is being used to obtain the two samples, then the data is thought of as being dependent. There, it's related. There's, there's a connection between the, um, the data. Uh, the classic dependent data example is that of a what's known as a test, retest, or a before and after situation. Uh, suppose you have a situation where a professor gives an exam and the class in, as a whole, the professor is not very satisfied with the results. So maybe spend a day or two doing some type of intervention, uh, working on worksheets, um, going over the material again, doing something, and then taking the test again or a different test but covering the same material. That's, a, that's clearly dependent because there's a connection. It's the same person. The connection is definitely the same person. The same source, that person, was used to collect two different pieces of data from. The first exam score, the second exam score. Um, the idea there is, again, that there's a natural pairing of the data, the before and the after situation. Now, if two different data sources are used, then we think of the data as being independent. In other words, it's not related. Suppose I would take the results of a day class, a day statistics class, and compare the results of the exam with my night class. So there's no connection there. It's, it's not like in the dependent case where I did the test retest, the connection is a person. So I can actually see if individually, person by person, whether they improved or not. Because the question is going to be, did the intervention help? Did it actually improve scores? Well. Simply comparing a day class with a night class, where's the connection? Where's the improvement, so to speak? I can make a determination as to which class did better, but there's no natural connection. If I have George in one class, how do I pair up George with somebody else in another class? There's just no reasonable way to do that. Um, let's take a look at a, another classic type of dependent um, data example. Suppose you're doing a price comparison test with Vaughn's and R. Albertsons. Now, this is actually dependent because you go out and maybe the first item look at is um, Campbell's chicken noodle soup. Well, you go to Vaughn's and how much is that soup there? I don't know, maybe it's 89 cents for that can of soup. And Albertsons, what is it? I don't know, maybe it's 85. The natural pairing, the connection, is it's the same soup. No, it's not the same physical can, but it's, it's Campbell's, the same brand, it's the same size, it's the same everything. So that's the connection. That's where we're pairing it. Um, then maybe you go take a look at uh, Top Ramen or something. And for a case of Top Ramen, I've got no idea. I haven't bought Top Ramen since I was a graduate student. So let's just say it's, you know, oh, 5.25 or something like that. I do remember it's pretty cheap. And then at Albertsons, maybe it's 613 or something. Again, does that connection, because it's the same thing. It's the same 
It's a case of this exact same item. And really the way I can analyze this, um, and I go on and on and on and get more data. My chart here has room for four, but clearly you're not going to do much of a price comparison with only four. You may get 15, 20, 30 items, whatever. But the obvious way to analyze this is to subtract the two and look at the differences. I can subtract the two and look at the differences because they're paired by the same item. It's the same item, same item. So subtracting these makes sense. But go to an independent data example, like the two classes. If I have a day class and a night class, how would I subtract them? How would I pair them up? Let's say, think of this in terms of, um, not course grades, let's say exam grades. for two different classes. There's no way I can naturally pair them. Matter of fact, it's very rare that I have the exact same number of students in a day class as a night class. So there's no way to, to match them up. In the dependent case, there will be the, exactly the same number of, of observations. If, if I'm looking at some type of, of milk as an example, and milk here at Vaughn's was uh, 279 a gallon. And that brand wasn't available. I didn't have data for it, so I had a missing data point. What I'd end up doing is just eliminating that. So I'd still have all my data actually paired. I, would, I have to have the same sample size. If there's missing data, I simply eliminate. Where here, in the independent case, Eliminating would cause a real big problem. If there's 30 students in the day class and 18 in the night class, you don't eliminate almost half of the day class to match them up. That doesn't make any sense. Um, understand the difference between dependent and independent data is really crucial for the comparison of two population parameters, particularly when we're interested in the variances, the standard deviations, the means, and the medians. That's extremely important because we use that as a basis to determine actually how we're going to go about the whole thing. Okay, and then in the next video, we're going to take a look at an example with some data of actually making a, a comparison.